Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the AIM-9 Sidewinder variants in the F-16C. We can use these AIM-9 variants with or without the helmet-mounted queuing system. We've done a separate video for the helmet-mounted queuing system. So today we're just looking at using the missiles on their own through the HUD. Two the armament screen, we can have them on pylons 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, and nine so six total and we have the variations of lima mic and x-ray versions all of them are multi aspect passive ir sensor missiles x-ray is a high off bore site vector thrust version and is optimal in a dogfight so we're going to go for the 9x on pylons one and nine all variants have roughly about the same range of between two miles and ten miles depending on r aspect speed and altitude as well as that as the hostiles let's look at today's controls to fire the weapon we're going to push and hold weapon release button we can use the nose wheel steering button there if we press it quickly then it steps between stations that we've got of the type that we've got selected to change the missile type that we've got selected for instance if we had amrams on as well we'd push and hold this button and that would swap between amrams and sidewinders if we want to switch between bore and slave modes, we can use enable switch depress. It's a push and hold affair, as we'll show later. To uncage the missile, we've got uncage switch. We'll look at that later. At some point, we're going to need to get a fire control radar lock, and we'll be using TMS management switch up and down for that. And to enable us to use this missile, we may or may not want to use the dogfight mode, which we've got there. From basic nav mode that we've got here, there are two ways that we can get in a position where we can use the AIM-9 Sidewinder. One is by pressing dogfight mode. Press that there. You can see we've got dogfight mode selected and we can use it there. The second way, if I neutralize that dogfight mode, is to go to air to air mode and we can use it through air to air mode. Probably the biggest giveaway that you've got an aim line selected is you can hear the hiss. If you hear the hiss in the background, that is the growl of the feedback of the IR sensor on the missile. And when we've selected one of these modes, we'll automatically have the SMS page up on this right MFD. We can cycle between air to air modes here, which we don't want to. Spot is not implemented yet. We will be able to change between spot and scan. Spot means that the seeker head of the missile is concentrated exactly on a little diamond, as we'll come to see a little bit later. If you change it to scan when that comes available, it will dance around in a pattern around the diamond which will give you more coverage for the seeker but we'll cover that when it becomes available inventory means we can look at the onboard inventory you can see we've got stations one and nine here it shows that we've currently got two aim nine x's selected we can cycle that if we had other weapons by pressing that or by pressing and holding nose wheel steering here is the current cooling of the missile we can have it warm which is its default position or we can call it we want to call it before combat because the missile sensor will be more accurate and sensitive if we have it on cool though bear in mind that we only have 90 minutes of coolant to use next we have our stations currently an ability to have stations one and nine we can select those stations like thus or we can use nozzle steering to single press to swap between them next we have slave mode or bore mode this is the master mode of the missile slave mode will mean that if we are to get a radar lock then the missile will be able to slave to that lock and bore sight mode here if we get a radar lock will not be able to slave to the radar lock it will always stay on the bore of the aircraft unless uncaged on a target note that if we depress and hold the depress button as we saw we can temporarily switch to the other mode if we want to that's all of the SMS covered. First, we will look at using the Sidewinder through the HUD without a radar lock. We can be on either bore or slave for this. It won't make any difference. I'm going to go and find a heat source that we think my sensor may pick up. Note that this double diamond is showing where the current selected seeker head is aimed at, currently locked to the bore site of the aircraft. You can see there that the tone has changed to a high pitched growl, which means now that the Sidewinder has detected around this diamond a heat source. Obviously, it's going to be that plane there. And in its basic format, as it stands, I can now press the weapon release button and fire. So I'll do that. Note that there is no ranging or aiming symbology like this case, no ability to, to give any lead because we don't have a lock and we have not engaged the missile. Now, if we wanted to be a little bit clever, what we could do, if I choose a new target here, if I get my tone, and I press uncage button, it's uncage the sensor of that missile from the bore sight position onto the heat source. It will now follow that heat source wherever it can within the gimbal limits of that particular sensor. We know it's locked on because of the change in tone, and we've got the single diamond around the guy here. One of the beauties of this is that we can 
fire a missile at a specified target while not having to point at him. This allows us to give us lead of the missile, which will help ballistically to hit the guy. Unpause. I'm going to aim in front of him over here. Weapon release. And we're going to fire one in there. Hopefully it will not be distracted by the flares. You never know. It's a random event essentially. And we've got him. That's two flankers down. Using the non-radar mode. Next we're going to go to look at the radar mode. One thing I forgot to mention is that our master arm must be turned to master arm on. Shown by arm here. We also have our weapon selected here. Hob HOB. High off boresight missile is the one that we have selected. Which is what the AIM-9X is. We've currently got zero of them because I've used them up. New play now. Let's go through the process. Check master arm on. Check air to air mode check make sure we've got slave mode engaged because we need that for a radar track to follow a radar track we've got it we can do this in either crm that's combined radar mode or acm air combat mode so we're going to use crm first to track target so i'm going to go for that guy there if he's still alive hopefully he is i'm going to make sure it's an stt lock if you want to know what i'm doing i've got videos about using the radar it's not going to be covered fully here, new symbology with this CRM radar track. First, we now have a DLZ, a dynamic launch zone. That's showing here a range scale of 10 miles to zero miles. The 10 will change depending on the current scale of the range. And the current range from us to the target calculated by the radar of where that chevron there is. So that's about seven miles. And we can see down here that we have a range calculated by F, the fire control radar of 7.0 nautical miles. We have two hobs. Our master arm is on. We also have some ranging information here to help know when to fire the missile. However, due to the range and aspect of the target, we'll look at that when we're a little bit closer. What we're going to do now is we're going to press the uncage button. And what that's going to do is uncage the missile seeker head from the ball sight onto the track target. Like thus, you can hear we've got the tone of the missile. You must have that tone of the missile before you fire. You must have the diamond uncaged and onto the target like that there. Note that this box is the target designator that shows that we've got a radar track on this target. The diamond's here, so we've got the IR track on this target. Regards to the dynamic range scale, I'm going to get behind him and it's going to give us a slightly better look at that. We can see now that there is the maximum range of our missile. That there is the maximum no escape range of our missile. That's really when we want to fire or below here, otherwise known as range versus a maneuvering target. That there is our minimum range. All missiles have a minimum range that we can fire at. That is our current range there of one nautical mile. And here in knots is our closure rate of 90 knots. So we are below no escape range, above minimum range. It's now an excellent time to fire. What I want to do is just add a little bit of lead and then I can fire. <laughs> should be a kill that's all i want to show using the sidewind in the f16c without helmet mounted curious system i hope that's useful until you later